Hello and welcome to this latest and greatest ITR Trends Talk. I am Connor Lokar. Today we're going to be looking at public sector uh, constructions. We, we certainly have current issues in the economy as it relates to really the, the macro economy itself, the uh, health and viability of the consumer and everything else uh, relating to COVID-19. But we also need to look ahead to future issues that aren't necessarily here right now, but are going to become uh, a, a more defined and a delayed onset. Uh, aspect of this COVID-19 uh, downturn. Uh, and one market that is very likely to have a difficult time in 2021, while most of the economy in 2021, that's next year, uh, and its participants are going to be bouncing back, uh, is the public sector. Uh, the public sector is going to have a bit of a delayed onset uh, set of, of issues and its own resistance, uh, specifically on the construction side of things. Some public sector, you know, what we generally think of public sector segments like defense, uh, for example, has actually been a welcome, a welcome market uh, of growth for our clients here uh, in 2020 and one that should hold up in, in 2021. And very similar to defense spending, public sector construction uh, is faring well right now. Um, the most recent data available uh, indicates that U.S. public sector construction is actually up 7.4% uh, through the most recent uh, 12 months. And it's it really weathered the best uh, um, or, or fairly well in the instantaneous COVID-19 storm. It seemed to sustain that most intense month of disruption uh, that was April uh, quite well, actually, uh, increasing uh, up about 1.5% even in the month of April relative to uh, April 2019. That's one of very few metrics, trust me, that uh, was able to eke out a month-over-month -month gain in the month of April. Most most folks were dealing with double-digit declines uh, for the month. Um, so it's held up well recently. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is not something that we expect to be sustainable. Now, looking back at 2008-2009 and the Great Recession precedent, uh, which we happen to think is going to be relevant, uh, for public sector construction markets, the recent plus side performance really is not surprising. Uh, U.S. total, total uh, public sector construction actually maintained, believe it or not, maintained month over month growth. Uh, when we look back to the Great Recession, it maintained that month over month growth posture into late 2009. And if you can remember back, late 2009 is actually when the U.S. economy itself was bottoming out. Those were actually the, the deepest and darkest days of the Great Recession was uh, right around that time frame. Now, what occurred thereafter is very concerning. Uh, U.S. public sector construction went into recession immediately, uh, moving into early 2010, and stayed in recession, annualized year-over-year -year decline in public sector construction levels all the way into late 2013, limping into recovery through the rest of that year and actually not achieving sustained year-over-year -year growth, what we call at ITR Phase B, accelerating growth until 2014. I'll repeat that, it didn't actually get back to accelerating growth again until 2014, almost four uh, years removed after the U.S. economy was itself, uh, you know, as measured by U.S. GDP or U.S. industrial production was, you know, well into full recovery and rebound posture for multiple years uh, at that point. So what we know is, is there is a delayed onset of decline and, and it tends to linger. The ripples of these macroeconomic uh, disruptions, it, it tends to hit the public sector much more swiftly where it's a much more delayed phenomena in the public sector. So as we look at and fast forward, apply some of that precedent and lessons learned, as we look at 2021 and 2022, we are concerned. Uh, we expect severe strains on tax coffers from the state and local levels is going to lead to, as history has showed us, constrained investment uh, and spend out of state, local municipalities for an extended period of time. I mean, we have to think about all of the damage and disruption, obviously the, the hits to states that have state level income tax, obviously the complete deterioration um, of private sector payrolls is gonna have a negative impact there. Uh, we also know that they're paying out more in unemployment benefits. That's gonna be an outbound expenditure at the state level that is exceedingly high, record high, uh, generally across the country. And then, you know, we also just think about the little things. You look at states that derive uh, a big chunk of revenue from say tolls or uh, gas taxes when folks haven't been driving, they haven't been going through tolls, they haven't been filling up their cars as much, they're working from home, they're staying from home, we're quarantining, we're all doing the things that we're told to do. And that's going to have some major tax hit implications, which is going to limit the ability of these states to go out and spend money next year, the year after, uh, very likely as well. 
So our forecast for, for U.S. total uh, public sector construction assumes year over year contraction throughout 2021 after a pretty good year here, uh, mild growth here in 2020 when it's all said and done. Um, it's going to assume contraction in 2021 and at least the first half uh, of 2022. So if your business is a participant in these markets, do not expect the good times to last. And when the bad times do come, I would expect them to linger uh, on for a little while, even as much of the macro economy around you, your neighbors, your friends, your family, it's, you're going to be hearing and reading about a robust rebound next year. Uh, incomes are going to be picking up, employment's going to be picking up, consumer spending, U.S. GDP. We're going to be hearing and feeling a lot better next year and hearing a lot of good things. But if you're operating these markets, they're going to be a bit out of sync, uh, much as they are right now in a more advantageous way for your business. So uh, it really could, you know, as we look at, you know, what can we do? It, it could pay dividends to sacrifice some margin right now uh, in your bid that if these are project-based opportunities for you. you know, Try to secure these projects this volume because the bid competition is going to become quite intense next year as both private and public sector project opportunities start to dry up. So you know, this is going to include most markets as we look at you know, public sector health care, uh, education investment, both parts of, um, of the public sector, they're taking cash flow hits mostly the former on the healthcare side due to deferred um, services uh, at the height of the COVID-19 uh, uh, fears for folks going in. And then uncertainty, as we look at the latter on the education side, uncertainty regarding future campus uh, investment needs or K through 12, you know, as we see more kids transitioning to remote learning through at least the near term, it would seem in, in a lot of cases. So that was, those are a couple of major, major concerns that we have. Now, there's a, a couple of variables and what I'll call upside risks here that we're going to be monitoring, and mostly from a legislative standpoint. We could see, I'm not saying we will, but we could see a major federal bailout, which should help alleviate some of the state level financing issues, or we could also see um, an infrastructure bill uh, to boost public sector work, uh, public sector, public works investment. Uh, could see one or the other, or both. Um, and these concerns could be alleviated, but there's a lot of ifs in there. So we're going to be keeping an eye on, on those for you uh, here at ITR moving forward. And, and, and if those developments change, we're going to let you know. But for now, I would assume in your internal capacity planning, your budgeting, uh, that these difficulties in, in this sector uh, are going to start to creep in here as we progress into this fall. And I'd expect them to stick around for a while when they get here. So we want to make sure you're prepared for that uh, and have that factored in for your planning. So thank you for joining me here. Uh, and this is Connor Lokar signing off. I'll see you on the next one.